Let's begin with the rising tensions between Israel and Iran. Sanctions put into place by the United States and the European Union are starting to hurt the people of Iran in a major way, with access to food and other imports blocked. Now, the West hopes that the pain will bring Iran back to the bargaining table in terms of its nuclear program. In the meantime, Israel is stepping up its threats that an attack on Iran may be Im imminent, with Israel's defense minister Ehud Barak drawing a line in the sand. He calls it the, quote, zone of immunity, the point at which Israel could no longer put off taking action. But in the West's efforts, efforts to isolate Iran, India has announced it will send a delegation into Iran and has now emerged as the number one customer of Iranian oil. Now, there are new indications China also will send in officials, and this global chess match looks like it may be a messy one and a long one. Well, Peter Joseph is the founder of the Zeitgeist Movement. His group works to tackle some of the toughest issues, global economic crisis, uh, to diplomatic issues, and, and a lot more. He just returned from Israel. Hey there, Peter. Uh, I know you spent about a week there. Talk to me a little bit about your impressions uh, of Israel, uh, the people you spoke to, and what's going on there. Uh, well, thank you, Christine, for having me. Uh, Israel is in a very complex state. On one side, you have a very intelligent public that uh, is not representative of the state that's causing all of these general war-like interests, interests in the occupation, the prisons of the West Bank and Gaza, and everything else that I'm sure we've talked at length to death about. So, you know, it's important to initially point out that there's an incredible culture there that really does not represent the state. And in the speech that I gave to a sold-out audience full of not only Israelis but Palestinians, there is a general interest to want to see all of these problems stop. And the Zeitgeist Movement's attempt, broadly speaking, is to get the world to come together with the general foundation that these issues have to find resolution or holistically, or we're going to have some very, very caustic problems in the future. World War III, the first to mention. And when you say these issues, uh, as you say, I mean, war is one of these issues. And it's not just um, as simple as, should we have war or shouldn't we? I mean, there is... Uh, you know, number one, a huge defense industry, uh, both in the U.S. and Israel, uh, you know, that a lot of people say may have an interest uh, in war. I know you've written about in the past, um, you know, as far as consequences of war, you've said that it benefits the upper class and it results in the denigration of the lower class. Uh, talk to me about this divide as it relates to war and if you think there's an undercurrent of something else here other than a legitimate threat. Well, we often hear the term geopolitics. The correct term is geoeconomics. If you go down to the foundation of the state, Neolithic Revolution 10,000 years ago, suddenly we had, we went from hunter gatherer type of you know, nomadic societies to fixed cities, Mesopotamia, suddenly the introduction of the permanent military. You ended up with this sort of corporate approach to economic management defined as the state, which invariably generates imbalance and conflict and the necessity to override the interests of other states. Very similar, by the way, to how our economic principles work across the world through the corporate enterprise and the free-for-all market, as I often refer to it. It's a competitive war-like system. So, in the broadest scope, what do we expect when the states begin to behave this way? If you were to look at a map of all the territorial disputes, all the resource acquisitions, all the annexations gone, gone through history, it's one massive affair of warfare, thousands and thousands of wars that have existed for the past 5,000 years that have been noted. So the problem is much more underlying. We can talk about the specifics of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We can talk about the Ch Chinese, Russia, and Iranian issue with respect to power development against U.S., Israel, Canadian, and Western interests, which is very terrifying, by the way, especially given the financial burden and collapse we're seeing across the world, which is always a characteristic of warfare on the horizon. But underneath the whole thing is the economic premise. And until we find economic resolution, until we begin to learn how to share our resources, speaking poetically but very literally, until we can divide, define a new level of what we, saw, we see as peace, meaning a collaborative effort, not state entities seeking their own advantage over each other, but something new, which I could talk at length as well. Uh, we're not going to see any resolution to any of these issues, and that's a fundamental premise in part of the type of economic reforms the Zeitgeist Movement pushes forward with. Well, what was your reasoning, Peter, for, for taking this movement? I know you've got a lot of followers um, from around the world. What was your reasoning for going physically to Israel um, and, and speaking there? 
Well, because it is the hotbed of a great deal of tension in the world, it's seen as one of the most pivotal crises and you know, positions of, of destabilization in the world. It was symbolic to go there and to speak on the issue of war. And the lecture that I gave was on the broad definition of the state, its, its, its evolution, as I mentioned in prior just a moment ago, and how we really can't resolve this issue. So I went there for symbolic reasons, but also, obviously, because of the growing tensions between between these massive superpowers that are now dividing themselves, as I mentioned earlier, that can very easily trigger another world war, which is what terrifies all of us. So those are the few levels that and you've laid out there. You've laid out some of these um, problems, and I think that there, um, for anyone who sort of uh, is following what's going on, keeping their hand on the pulse uh, of sort of geopolitics or, as you say, geoeconomics, um, these, these issues are, are out there. But you know. Are there solutions available? And uh, I guess, I mean, or do you just think war is inevitable between um, Iran and the West? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a prophet, but I will say that generally speaking, war has been inevitable for a long time based on the very nature of the structures that have been installed and the very dynamic of our economic system. Are there solutions that can be had in the meantime? Yes, but I don't think they're going to come from speaking truth to power, as they say. I am in deep support of a large grassroots global movement that unifies humanity to step up against this rather sick distortion that has emerged throughout power across the board. We can talk about the neuroses of the U.S. empire. We can talk about the neuroses of, of various Arabic states, of Israel as well. We can talk about all of these things to death as far as the specifics. But at the very core of this comes a deep social change that's required. And it's going to take a grassroots movement to move this forward. I have little faith in the change coming from, coming from the state empires. Well, we uh, understand that you'll be working on it. In the meantime, Peter Joseph, founder of the Zeitgeist Movement.